wow just wow that was one hell of a match uh, at the beginning of the world cup prior to world cup i said spain portugal portugal spain however this you want to call it that's going to be the match to watch i didn't expect a good match uh it's the first match of the tournament usually teams take it easy i know there's a lot of stake uh but that wow that really i was enjo i enjoyed it very 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 much uh that was all i expected and more um we had three games today. I think the first two we can actually glance over quite quickly. So Uruguay, Egypt. Uh, yeah, Uruguay was not super impressive, but they steadily got at Egypt, which played without Mo Salah, um, were defensively very stable. I was looking at my tip at halftime and I thought 2-1, uh, I think I took for Uruguay at one point. I was considering and then I think I made it 2-0 because I thought uh, Mo Salah will not be playing. And then I thought to myself, well, you know Hector Kupa. You know that Uruguay is always playing a start, uh, start defense. So why didn't you go for a 0-0? Well, it was 1-0 for Uruguay. They got the deserved winner, although I felt a lot with Egypt at the end. I think they fought bravely. I think a draw would not be undeserved, but I think Uruguay was the better team. Suarez should have buried one. Uh, Cavani had uh, two big chances. So in the end, while a draw for Egypt would have been somewhat deserved, I think it was the right result that uh, Uruguay beat Egypt. Um, I cannot say the same for Morocco-Iran, which was an amazing first half with no goals, with Morocco having uh, really nice chances, playing nicely forward. Then Iran got the better uh, towards the end, also probably should have scored. And then the game was totally boring in the second half. I think every second minute there was a player lying on the floor for no apparent reason. Um, yeah, and then an own goal decided the game uh, when everything was headed for a 0-0 draw that the game in the second half deserved. In the first half, I think a uh, 2-1 lead for Morocco would have probably been appropriate. So yeah, it was a little bit of a surprising result and I really feel for the guy who made the own goal. Um, you must feel terrible, especially now that you know that this was your chance. Uh, on the other side, I'm a little bit happy that there was a winner in that game because it really needed a winner. If there was a draw between those two teams, they would have barely a chance of advancing anymore. So it was good. Iran won. Now they have at least a slight chance uh, against Portugal or Spain. But the way those two played, I don't think uh, either Morocco or Iran will be a big problem to them. Well, the games will be different. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go straight to uh, the big game. I thought it was an amazing game. Ronaldo finally showed at the World Cup that he is a great player and that he can decide a match on by himself. Uh, say what you want about Ronaldo. I was never his biggest fan. I always uh, was kind of not very much appreciating his antics, his seeming inflated ego, but it was about four years ago, maybe even more, that I made my peace with him. Uh, that I said, yes, he is perfect. He's probably the perfect soccer player. If you would construct a soccer player, you would construct Ronaldo from scratch. You would not do Messi, because Messi is not uh, physically not perfect. Ronaldo physically is the perfect athlete. Skill-wise, we can talk about uh, who's better. Is it Messi? Is it Ronaldo? Uh, I think it's pretty much uh, with an open question. Uh, for most of the time that I've been watching this debate, I would have preferred Messi. I gotta give it to Ronaldo in the last four years. Um, he had the he has the better track record. Before it was Messi. Now I think Ronaldo has the better track record. Although the 2006 season. Uh, he did not contribute much to Real Madrid winning the champion 2016, not 2006. He didn't contribute much to Real Madrid winning the Champions League. Um, he had some contribution at the Euros, 
I'll, I'll give it to them. But then in the final, he again went missing. And as a colleague of mine said, he manages to win the Euros as a player and a coach at the same time. Uh, my colleague didn't like that he was so active uh, on the sidelines. I actually liked it a lot. I think it showed a, uh, how much Ronaldo cares for the game and for his colleagues. But now, finally, the World Cup. And that was, was sorely needed, uh, that Ronaldo really takes over a game. He made as many goals today as he made in all his other World Cup appearances before, together, combined. And none of those goals that he made were in any way important. It was a 2-0 penalty against Iran in 2006. It was the goal, I think, 5 or 6 nil. I think it's 6 nil against North Korea. And it was, yes, the winner against Ghana uh, four years ago, but that was the most unimportant goal in that tournament. They lost it against Germany and then the US. So uh, Ronaldo took over. Uh, this game early, by covering the penalty. If he made a wonderful assist uh, when it was still 1-0 on the counter-attack where the striker then muffled the chance, I think if they would have scored there, they would have buried Spain. Spain was about to take over the game, and then they took over the game. Um, the equalizer, yes, we can discuss foul or not foul on Pepe. I, to me personally, it looked like a foul on Pepe, so I would not have given the goal. But then great individual effort by... Um, Diego Costa. I was wondering how much Portugal relied on VAR in this case. Uh, whether they didn't attack as fervently as they would if they, as they would have otherwise, thinking maybe that the referee will overturn it. Um, then Spain had a great chance with uh, a ball that, uh, that came off the crossbar and hit the line. Uh, other chances to score and I really thought Spain will take over the game and then Ronaldo scored well Ronaldo made a shot and the hair more or less put a good bit in uh, my thoughts on that is well if you have the best goalkeeper in the world the supposedly best goalkeeper in the world playing England well the English goalkeeping history will put his impact on him too it was a very English mistake Sorry, England fans. I just uh, to rub it in, but I think this was a mistake that you usually see from an English goalkeeper, or from Oliver Kahn in the 2002 World, World Cup final, and he was the best player in the tournament. So maybe this was his one mistake. Um, Spain uh, then looked a little. To me, I thought Spain looked buried. This must have. This was a big blow. But then they made a great. Uh, free kick a combination that was definitely practiced a lot and Diego Costa scored his second so we had uh, two goals by Ronaldo two goals by Diego Costa three minutes later uh, Nacho who made the penalty foul on Ronaldo scored a really really great third goal so it was really a crescendo building up we had the penalty um, I would say that the first Spanish goal was better than Ronaldo's second goal but then the uh, it cost a second with this free kick uh, pattern that they clearly tried to do. Uh, and Nacho's goal, well, great volley. It reminded me at this point, the game reminded me about Spain Nigeria in 98, where it went the other way, where Nigeria scored a great goal to make it three, and there was also a goalkeeping error by a Spanish goalie. So it's not all the English goalies that make mistakes. Subisareta made that mistake. Uh, and with 3-2 up, I was surprised. Not really surprised, but I was surprised that Spain came back. Uh, as you've probably seen in the video two days ago, I wrote them off after the coaching change. They looked shaky. I think Spain looked vulnerable, but then at 3-2 up, they had confidence in themselves. They sealed, they tried to seal the game by not giving any possession back to Portugal. Portugal didn't see the ball until the 87th minute when PK made a foul on Ronaldo and Ronaldo put in the free kick in a manner that I haven't seen for a long, long time. Uh, maybe Messi against Iran four years ago was a similar great free kick. I still would rate this one higher, not only because of the opponent, which was a more worthy opponent, but also the angle. I mean, 
Okay, I was you couldn't put a paper between the ball and the nose of the span and the Spanish wall. The way it sailed in, it was perfect. All credit to Ronaldo. I uh, gotta give it. And if, at the end of the game, you saw it felt like a win for Portugal. It felt like a loss to Spain. Um, speaking of Spain, I wrote them off. I was wrong. I gotta say it. They looked good, but they looked vulnerable. Portugal didn't look particularly good. They looked solid, uh, I think, but were overwhelmed by Spain. I think if Portugal plays against a uh, stronger team, they really need Ronaldo to keep them in the game. Uh, Ronaldo was outstanding. If he keeps that form up, I think Portugal could, could go far. My dream scenario now would be to have a Portugal-Argentina final. And, to be honest, Messi to win it. It was also curious because I actually started liking Spain of yeah, the latest 2006, if not sooner. I think at 2002 World, World Cup, I already thought that Spain should go far. And was really hopeful that they made the semifinals and got cheated by the referee against South Korea. I think Spain would have beaten Germany in the semis, they would have made it to the final. Um, that was a, a good Spanish team. In 2006, uh, I was at the World Cup, I saw the group games of Spain. They were outstanding, they just came apart against Zidane. Uh, although there, they, even there, they dominated the first half against France and then just, um, yeah, were too, too, too inexperienced and uh, from then on it was all Spain. I really liked the Spanish style of play. I was actually happy that it was more a uh, Barcelona thing, which is a little bit... Um, there's a lot of ir ir irony there. Barcelona in no way thinks of itself as Spain, but when Spain won the World Cup, when Spain won all those Euros, they played in the Barcelona style, which is derived from the great Dutch style total football of the 70s. So. Uh, a little bit of iron there, and actually I think that the Spanish jersey, which, you know, I don't like that much, I make it white. Make it white, use red, don't make it uh, this bluish color with orange, and then this weird pattern all over. Uh, and it's not as weird, I think there is a tribute there. The colors were between red and orange, it's a reference to the Netherlands, I think. The pattern is exactly the same pattern, or a modernized version, of the one that the Dutch had on their orange jerseys when they won the Euros. Yes, this pattern was also worn by the GDR, was also worn by the USSR and other teams, but the Dutch made it famous. And I think this jersey plays some tribute to the Dutch roots of what is now considered the tiki-taka Spanish style. Um, at least that's what I think. In that case, yeah, I'm okay with it. I still don't like the jersey. When I look at it, it looks a white jersey, a gray, light gray jersey. Um, if you look closer, yeah, you see the blue on this uh, gray. It just doesn't look Spanish enough to me. I, if it's a tribute, it's nice, but I think it would look much more nicer, honestly. Where will Spain go from here? They will make it out of the group and then we'll see. Um, if they would play Uruguay, I think Uruguay showed today that uh, they have trouble when they are the favorite team. But I can see that if they have to defend and with that strike force on the front, they will find their bearings sooner or later, at the latest against Saudi Arabia. Uh, I very much like Cavani and Suarez beating up on the Saudis. Um, so if that happens, I still would like I still like Uruguay's chances there. If they play Russia, yes, Russia started with a 5-0, but it was against the Saudis. I think Russia would stand no chance against Spain, honestly. So it really depends how the group will go, and I think it's now down for sure to goal difference. And again, I think Ronaldo will have to step up, but also his teammates. Portugal, I think hangs a little bit on Ronaldo. If Ronaldo performs like today, he needs the team needs to get a little bit more and more involved. It was interesting to see that Karesma went once he got in was a, uh, was the second most active player on the field, and but he also loved some chances. He was not uh, with with him. I'm never sure what's gonna happen. Um, the other team is the rest of the team is solid but pedestrian in a way. 
So the spark needs to come from somewhere. And Karesma and Ronaldo are the two players that I think like, give the spark. Last thing I want to talk about, uh, Jersey matchups. I did not talk about it yesterday. I was very surprised that Saudi Arabia played in green at first, but then I thought about, well, if they would have played in all white, we have white pants that clash. I was thinking about it when I made my prediction on the blog to say that Saudi Arabia plays in white because I thought they would put green pants in them. But it made sense that they played in green. Uh, but it also, you could not see much of the jerseys uh, against the green. I think green jerseys on the green background, that's a weird combination in a way. Especially that tone of green, it really uh, made us all a little bit uh, invisible. But then again, this was the one uh, color versus color matchup. What else did we see? Uh, yeah, the Uruguay Egypt matchup was okay uh, color wise. Uh, all matchups today were okay. I think I liked the Iran uh, Morocco. Uh, jersey match of the best, although they had to probably the most boring jersey because of all stock jerseys. But at least uh, the Adidas style is a classic soccer jersey style. Uh, for me, the Portugal the Portugal kit probably of all the kits looked best today. Uh, I still don't like the color on the kit, but I think that one that's the kit that I liked best of the, all the kits today. Uh, over overall, of all the kits I saw, Saudi Arabia actually I like really like the crest. Uh, Russia also looks better in play than uh, when I just look at the jersey. There's something interesting with those white stripes for me. So, but jersey matchup, I thought Iran against Morocco was the most interesting one. I also thought it's interesting that Morocco plays in how I would like Portugal to play. And also that uh, green, red, white. Three of the four match matches we saw featured those colors very prominently. So, so far it was a green, uh, I should say red, white, green World Cup. Green was more an accent color. Uh, and then Uruguay, Egypt did not go much against this because, I mean, they replaced the green with black and yeah, they are the little light blue on green and the blue strap on the socks of uh, Russia don't make much impact. And same can, can, can say for this weird jersey that's been against. So tomorrow I'm looking forward uh, to the first three games. Um, I'm not sure if I will, I will try to watch the first three games for sure. I want to see France, how they play against Australia. And those are two teams that I actually generally like, uh, always had an affinity for France and Australia. Maybe most was 20 years ago when I was at the height of my love for both countries. Um, and a funny thing is, uh, through my company, I almost would have won tickets for that game, but that would have been traveling there and then we have Argentina playing Iceland very interesting intriguing match I really want to see how Argentina is to finally get a feel Argentina I don't know Argentina for me is the big unknown uh, then Peru Denmark I think is already uh, very much a deciding game uh, those two are head to head to me I think the winner of this match will go through if it comes down to a goal difference between those two, I still would favor Peru simply because they have, no, maybe they don't. Peru has to play France next. Well, I would favor Denmark then, if I think about it. I know in my official prediction I made it the other way around, but I, I if I say it realistically, if this is a draw, I think this would favor Denmark slightly because they can then beat up on Australia. Whereas Peru needs to get something against France and playing catch up in the last game is not a fun exercise, especially France would be through at that point. Uh, and in the evening, the Nigeria game, yeah, uh, Nigeria, Croatia will be interesting. Uh, have to see how I feel after what watch the first three to three games. Well, those are my thoughts on today. Let me know what you think or thought about the four games so far. And yeah, it will be an exciting day tomorrow and also Sunday. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.